we will try again. I guess I wasn't recording last time. So uh, we're going to talk today about using the jQuery widgets. And specifically, we're going to deal with the accordion and the tab widgets. So to get that, uh, you go to the jQueryUI.com site. And we can download a custom version of our JavaScript file by including or including, including, that sounds like a good word, huh? not including some of these different things if we're not going to use them. And so that would uh, make our JavaScript file smaller. So in addition to the jQuery code that we already have, we need to also include the JavaScript file for the UI widgets. So this is using it from their content delivery network. So I'm going to copy that and put that in my file. So I have the jQuery included. And this, again, is at the bottom of my file. I'm including the jQuery UI. And then my bootstrap and my daves.js, which is where I'm going to put my own code to execute uh, and to, to customize what it's going to look like and do different things, right? That was this dave.js where we did the double clicks and that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition, we need to have the styling for this. And this is from the theme roller. This is the style sheets that the jQuery UI library uses to make it look pretty. Okay, and you can you can create your own through the theme roller here. And this is uh, if I have to click the button, I guess. You can change uh, all the colors and things like that. Remember that from yesterday. Uh, that's what identifies how these accordions look. Okay, and, and the backgrounds for that, etc. So I'm, I'm just going to use their default, which is here. And we put that in our head of our document so that we have the CSS to style all of these widgets. All right? So let's go look at the widget accordion, accordion widget in the API documentation under widgets. And we want to look at the accordion widget. So their documentation is really pretty good. It tells you what the markup is going to look like. So this is the HTML that will be turned into an accordion. So I'm going to just copy that, and then we'll play with that uh, and put it into my text. Okay. Uh, so this is inside of my body. Uh, it's got a header, an H3 tag and a div, and a header, and a div. So this will create an accordion with two elements in it. We have a pair of h3 tags and a, and a div tag. That creates one accordion element. So let's see what this looks like without any actually turning it on. All right, so there is a header and the div content, a header and the div content. All right? There's no accordionness to this, no styling. I can't click on anything. So if the person doesn't use JavaScript, uh, this is what it would degrade to, which is not bad. That's, that's a good look. It's got everything you need on it, everything you want to have in a normal HTML page. So that's what's nice is that jQuery devolves or degrades nicely. So to turn this on, we have to actually tell jQuery that this is the div we want to turn into an accordion. So we can give it an ID, and I can call this anything I want. I'm going to call this one accordion just to make it uh, easier to understand. But we give it an ID of an accordion. And why do I use an ID here? Directly targeted, right? It's easy to get to. And so I need to tell jQuery, when the document is loaded, that I want you to turn this into an accordion-type widget. OK, so it's one line of code that I add that looks like this. I say, find my ID. And this could be ID of Dave. This doesn't matter. So I target that using the jQuery selector. And then I call the accordion method on that. 
and that turns it into an accordion. That's all it does. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? So I reload it, and it adds the style. And look at that. It even animates up and down. It shows my, my accordion growing and shrinking. Isn't that sweet? I can put anything I want inside of that these divs. So and I can add more of them, right? So let's add a couple bunch more of these. Reload my page. And now I've got a bunch of different accordion pieces. And I can put anything I want inside of these accordions. Uh, I can put maybe a bunch of P tags with some stuff in it. We'll put a bunch of these in here. And when I reload that now, it takes the accordion space, takes up the, the height of the of the total of the largest div inside of this accordion HTML. So each one has the same height now, and that way it can scroll in between it without any problems. See that? that one yeah, slightly, right? Um, so and and you can you can change the height of these with some options and do all kinds of stuff. It doesn't really have. It's just like a pixel. It's a pixel too big, something like that. Isn't that sweet, though? That's a cool, and uh, it's responsive. The question is, can you build a horizontal one of those for a main? Sure. I can put anything I want in here. No, I don't see what you mean. Well, I would call that a um, a tab. Which is, uh, let's see if I, they have an example down here, which is the next thing I'm going to go through. Uh, they don't have, this is a tab. That's not an accordion, that's a tab. So I would do it this way. What I had meant was for a horizontal for it to only be 50 pixels high. So you click on one of them, it extends out, shows you two or three links. Or you click on another one, that first one shrinks, it extends out, shows you two or three links. Yeah, I don't. You're talking about drop downs. There are some options. Yeah, I don't know quite what you're getting at still. But uh, there are options in the accordion widget that I can change as I create it. So I can say, for instance, I want the second one to always be active on loading. So it opens up the second one on loading. And this might be done f from your back end. Uh, but as I create it, let's do active to make it the third element down, which would be the third div. So we can do some of these kind of things. Uh, and it made this one, sub three. yeah, sub three. It's the, the fourth element, um, thinking of it as an array of these things. So that one automatically came up all the time. So even if I select this and I reload my page, it's always going to make this one active. Does that look better on the screen? It's got a gray little gray. So you can change the theme to make this look different. But So that's one thing. But there's lots of uh, options we can do with this. We can animate, change how it animates. Um, there's a bounces, bounce slide. So let's try that. And all we do is we add these key value pairs, which suspiciously looks like what? Kind of hash, right? It's more like a hash. Uh, this is actually in JSON uh, notation. 
JavaScript object notation, JSON, and it's basically a set of name value pairs for the properties that are going to get passed to this accordion. In Ruby, it's like a hash that we would send. So let's go uh, load this guy up again. And we'll change. See, it, it, uh, that one didn't do a bounce slide as far as I'm concerned. And it doesn't slide back up. So it's something I did wrong here. I broke it. Seems like, uh, let's get rid of that guy. I don't know why. That looks right to me. Oh, maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's just that. Let's try that. Nope. nope. So something wrong with that? We'll we'll take that out, since I don't know what's wrong with it for now. Uh, so we can we can add a, anything inside of this again. So maybe part of what he's saying is I could have a bunch of these as a tags, right? These could be a bunch of uh, a tags. So instead of that, let's put those in. This top guys and reload my page. And when I open that now, I've got a bunch of links. I'm not sure if that's what he means or not. Uh, I can also make this only certain wide, so it only takes up maybe this could be the column and not take across the entire page. So I can size this with CSS and make that width smaller. <coughs> Pardon me? Sure, I could say class, use the bootstrap stuff of a uh, span three, maybe, and put this entire thing in a div that is uh, row, was it responsive? What was it called? Row? Fluid, there we go. Row fluid. You know these, right? You guys got this down. Last night, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if I do that, I need to have a... Uh, I need to have another div... That's just a, well, that's interesting. Why did it do that? Ah. Uh, 10 to make the other side have some value. Was it three? I'm not sure if you can do math, though. So just We'll check it. Well, that didn't do it. There we go. So when I'm responsive now, it looks more like a menu, a sliding menu on the right. And I can put content out here. <clears throat> Isn't that cool? I'm having a rough day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is uh, the div for my the responsive row. So let's add another, <clears throat> let's play with the, um, boy, my voice is going. <clears throat> let's look at the tab widget, which is also very cool. Tabs widget. And it works the same way. It has some specific uh, 
HTML that it operates on. It has to be in that structure. And then to activate it, we just call, we target that particular div, and we just call tabs on it. And then we can pass some options if we want. But that structure, for some reason, is all the way down here. So I'm going to copy this uh, example. And it's a bunch of uh, divs with ULs inside of them. So this structure has to be just like this. So we'll put it uh, in its own, well, let's put it in its own responsive row. Um, where its class equals row fluid. And the, the piece that we want to target is going to be called tabs. So it has an ID of tabs. So we'll use that as our jQuery selector. And then it's got an ordered list of the tab names. These end up being the tab names themselves. Okay. And these IDs here are tied to these. Uh, the, the links are tied to the IDs that they're going to open. All right? Does everybody see that? This href tag ends up being a link that gets styled to look like a, a tab button. And when you click on it, it's going to open up this piece of HTML. If I click on this one, it's going to open up this piece of HTML. So all I have to do in my JavaScript is to activate this, tell jQuery that I'm using this particular one as a tab. And I have all the code right there already. So I'm going to say, for the ID of tabs, turn it on. And in this case, I'm going to have one, the first element, as active. So let's see what that looks like. So now I've got tabs that are in this own responsive row, and it picked out this, the first thinking that this starts at zero. Remember, we starting arrays. We start at zero. Zero, one, this is the one that became active. And these become links to go through each of those uh, pieces of data that are in my HTML. So whatever I put in here shows up in that tab, and it hides the rest of them. So it's doing all of the loading and hiding and keeping stuff in the same place, positioning it. Isn't that nice? That's a nice one. I use that a lot as well. <clears throat> also responsive. And pretty useful, even on a mobile phone, to have a, if you only have a couple of tabs across here, that's still easy to hit in a mobile device. All right, any questions on that? All right, I could even take this tab, this whole piece of code, and put it inside one of my uh, panels up here. So now my accordion, if I open up my tabs content panel, then I will see a tab widget inside of that. So now I've got my tabs. And maybe this is what you're looking at, Derek. You wanted them stacked. This kind of does that. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't know why at this level it stacks it back down again. Because I guess it, because it, it's only using three of the spans across yeah, here. That's why. Get out that wasp that tries to make it just a side of right. the picture. And you can see there it goes tall when you're that. Yeah. Big. So that's, uh, that's a widget within a widget. And it, it hides it completely when I go away. Witchception. Isn't that cool? It's a wicked widget right there. And what I've done in the past is I've had this accordion on the left and a tab on the top. And so you get kind of two menus that you can play with. It's, it's pretty useful. Unfortunately, the site, website I did that on is no longer up. 
so I can't show that. I was trying to find my code and show that to you. It's gone. What? Put a tab within a tab? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, because each one of these, if you give it a different ID, you'd have to turn it on as a tab, but you'd just have another line of code in here to turn on your second tab. So it's you could have tabs within tabs. <laughs> yes. All right. Any other uh, any questions on that? Now I encourage you to look at all of these. Uh, um, examples, they have lots of things like I could actually make these events change and go out and get data from a server on the back end, change the content dynamically. Um, and using these refreshes and all kinds of things, I can set options and, and uh, through the styling I can change the, the size of it. So those are really useful. You, could you imagine how long it would take to build that yourself? Just forever. I'm telling you, it's going to take you a long time. <laughs> That's just a really nice feature. All right, any questions on that? Oop. Ah, stop. So there are other things like the autocomplete. We talked about that one. The button widget is one that you're going to have to use. It's just a button that you can attach uh, and tell it that it's a button. All right. So it will act like a button in that case. And you can you can then add selector uh, anonymous functions to do something when the button is pressed, uh, like we've done before in the past. Um, the date picker is really cool that if you have a date input field, it will drop down a, let's see if they have a demo of this guy. It, it drops down a, a uh, calendar that you don't have to write yourself that uh, you can go backward and forward in time, and, and that will let you select a date. So you could put that, yeah. Can you go backwards? Look at that. And it handles the year correctly. Look at this. Watch. Wow. You guys remember how to write that yourself? The problem was dealing with leap years, figuring out so for a date picker, all you have to do is this. This is really cool. Let's add a date picker in here just for fun. Uh, but a lot of people use this and attach it to a, a, a text input field um, so that you can get the data back from it. That didn't work. So probably because this is... Let's put it in our next row. Where to go? Nice. Isn't that great when things work like that? It shouldn't. No, it doesn't. I can take this out. Put it in my Dave.js where it belongs. And there we go. We got a nice little calendar. Now you see why uh, I didn't let you use this when you were creating your own calendars. <laughs> but now you know how to create your own calendar. Isn't that sweet? So all I did was all I did was turn a div this div into a date picker. So that can be any element if I add that class to it, I mean that ID to it. So that's just really cool stuff, I'm telling you. Yay. And they have lots of uh, things you can change on this. 
disabling them and enabling them and changing stuff. So, um, there you go. Uh, any any questions on any of these widgets? They're pretty self-explanatory, I think. If you do a couple of them, the rest of them are really pretty simple to figure out. You're targeting something and you're you're uh, telling it to turn it into a tab or turn it into a uh, something else. So you'll have to figure out from the documentation how to do the button and the uh, menu, or you can use the Bootstrap menu if you want, and the drag and drop. Uh, stuff, which is interactions, I think. Yeah, draggable widget. The draggable and droppable widget. This lets you um, let's see if they have a demo down here. I can drag elements and know when they've been dropped. So you can do events when things happen like that. Isn't that cool? I can drag it and drop it out here. It doesn't do anything. It knows when I hit that element. And that's what they're using at the, the uh, Google, iGoogle that I showed you yesterday. So you'll have to imp implement something like this. And the other one was uh, sortable. She's this long. Uh, sortable interaction. The sortable widgets that lets you reorder things. Uh, I can drag and drop these and reorder them eventually. That's not working, is it? That's interesting. There we go. All right, so there we go. So, uh, isn't that cool? That's cool. Say, I want to sort my. Uh, Yeah. Well, they're doing both because that has an area that you have to drop it into, similar to that. Um, you might want to reorder your shopping cart. I don't know. There's a a wish list. Yeah, I want to. This should really be first. What site uses something like this? Okay, Steam. There you go. Netflix uses this. Um, record. I can do this right in Canvas. Forget Netflix; it's useless. This is a drag and droppable list that would be, say, I want to change my uh, nav over here, and I want announcements to be on the top. I can drag that up to the top. Well, it can't. It must not let me do that. Let's see. Let's put assignments above announcements. All right, so now announcements has ordered. And when I save it, it takes this order and saves it to the back end and redoes my nav on the left. Or I can take things out of here. And this is a drag and drop system. I just drag that down here. Now uh, e-tutoring will be taken away from the left-hand nav. So you guys won't see that anymore. I see these as grayed out, but you won't see them at all anymore. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to put this back. So that's a real life use of dragging and dropping. Very, very user friendly. All right. Any other questions on any of those kind of fun things that we did today? No? All right.